Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, keeping it free, .blogspot.com. Many people are surprised when they uh, listen to my sports videos here online um, and listen to my boxing blog on iTunes, right? And it's one word, Dwyer Boxing News. They're very surprised many times, knowing that I you know, care deeply about civil rights and knowing that, you know, I try my best to be as inclusive as possible, right? They're surprised to hear that I'm a libertarian. They want to know how an African American, or at least a person of color here in the United States, could actually align himself with libertarians more so than, let's say, the Democratic Party. Right? No one's surprised that I'm not a Republican. Right? But people are surprised to know that I'm not a Democrat. And they ask me why. Let me just say, it's because I believe in markets more than theory. Right? Now, I was uh, listening to a great show. It's Jay Taylor's show here online, right? in which he interviewed... David Stockman and Mike Shedlock right and they had a nice phrase for it they talked about a preference for the gold standard over what they call the PhD standard right I personally believe that it's foolhardy absolutely foolhardy to believe in any currency and I mean any currency, whether it's paper currency or cryptocurrency, that someone can create out of thin air unlimited amounts of. Right? The idea that a private body like the Federal Reserve can simply turn on a printing press and print dollars discredits the idea of holding wealth in the dollar in my eyes right also these cryptocurrencies right dogecoin for example where they can just create unlimited amounts of the currency to me destroys that currency's value the best thing about bitcoin is that you know a limited amount of bitcoins can be created Sadly, I can't say that about the United States dollar. Right, the decision by Richard Nixon in the early 70s to get the United States off the gold standard is one of the worst decisions ever made in American history. Understand what that decision did is it practically guaranteed an increase in the wealth gap in the United States. It guaranteed that people with means would move their wealth out of dollars and into real estate and the stock market. It guaranteed that we were going to be more prone, more subject to malinvestment as well as to bubbles and we've just had bubble after bubble. There seems to be a misperception out there that academics, people like Ben Bernanke, people like Janet Yellen, that these academic types can defy gravity. That their novel, untested ideas somehow are better than market-based solutions, that they can lead us someplace that we've never been led before. Right now, why we believe in that, given the imbalances that have taken place since Nixon took us off the gold standard, is simply astonishing. First, let's just look at the notion 
that these academics right know better than the rest of us and that if I can find out the school that a person attended right let's say Princeton University and if I find out that that person was a bigwig in the economics department at Princeton then I can rest assured that that person knows what they're doing and that that person will lead us down some Princeton road to economic nirvana. Now let's just explore that thought. Doesn't that assume that everyone in the economics department at Princeton shares the same beliefs? That there is consensus there. So when I hear the brand Princeton economics, right? Princeton economist, Princeton economics professor. I can rest assured that there is some Princeton consensus at the school and that this person can, using those beliefs and that consensus, show us the Princeton way of doing things. The problem with that idea is that it's a fallacy. Now I say this as someone who has multiple degrees from Stanford University. Right? I've been around these academics and I've been in an academic setting. Right? On one of the uh, prestigious campuses here in the United States. Let's just look at Princeton's economics department for a second. Let me also say too, one of my degrees was in economics right understand that the Princeton economics department has had let's say Paul Krugman Nobel Prize winner right understand another Nobel Prize winner from Princeton was Milton Friedman Milton Friedman and Paul Krugman don't you know didn't agree on a whole host of issues Right? Both are esteemed Nobel Prize winners from the same school. But yet, as you can imagine, if either was in power, they would be leading us in vastly different directions. Knowing that someone is from Princeton's economics department isn't enough information to tell us which direction the person would lead us in. Right? It's risky. In fact, it's too risky to blindly follow any economist from Princeton without knowing where they're leading us. Isn't it too risky to follow any academic blindly? But yet, isn't that what we're doing, especially when we give the Federal Reserve the power to, in essence, print money to determine the value of the dollar, to determine the quantity of dollars, right? Why is it preferable to have the dollar debased? devalued as it has been from the early 1970s to now. Just pull up a chart here online of the value of the dollar. Why is that better for poor and middle class people? Another question. Why is it better to punish savers by creating fake dollar liquidity, right? You're printing, you know, dollars ad infinitum. You're paying hardly any interest. Why is the economy better off punishing saving? Shouldn't savers get a fair rate of return? You know, what we've had are people of means realizing that they can't store their wealth in dollars. So they, of course, are out using their wealth to buy assets 
to pour money into things like Newport Beach, Orange County real estate, to pour money into things like the stock market, right? Poor people don't have that choice. They're relying on dollars to buy things like food. Right? And, of course, the value of those dollars, now that we're off of the gold standard, right, has fallen. So what you have now is a rising gap between the haves and the have-nots. Right? The rich have gotten richer. The poor have gotten poorer. The one thing that hasn't changed is the political posturing of the parties. Right? So, of course, Democrats will talk about the need to help the poor. We'll talk about the need to help the middle class. Even while under their watch, as has been happening with the current administration, the wealth gap has widened. In other words, the dialogue is divorced from the reality, right? The money printing is hurting poor folks. It's hurting the middle class. If you're poor or middle class and you don't believe me, just go to your local bank right now and try to get a loan. You're going to find out that the low interest rates Right? You can get loans for low interest rates if you're wealthy. The low interest rates are what the wealthy are getting on the money. Right? Steve Wynn, the casino magnate, was lamenting the fact that his company was able to get such cheap financing that their expansion plans accelerated. Right? Because they were practically being paid to borrow money, right? For the wealthy right now, they can't believe their luck. They have access to capital markets at very low interest rates. How does that help a poor or middle class person? If you're a middle class person watching this video, aren't you being squeezed? In fact, let's break it down. Aren't you being squeezed much more by the Ph.D. standard than you were ever squeezed by the gold standard? Right? Think about it. Why are wealthy people holding their wealth in real estate and the stock market? Right? At historical levels. Look at the P.E. multiples in the stock market right now. Look at the value of some of the real estate around you. It's never been higher in some areas. Right? Why are they holding their wealth in assets as opposed to dollars? Right? For those of you who have to hold your wealth, and we'll use that word loosely, in dollars, how does it feel to know that the Federal Reserve can just create more money out of thin air based on some academics whim and fancy? Right? Didn't we think in the 1990s and early 2000s that Alan Greenspan was a genius? that he somehow, the former Federal Reserve Chairman here in the United States, that he somehow had found a way to have a prosperous, low interest rate environment. Back then, couldn't anyone practically qualify for a no-money-down home mortgage? Where did that get us? Where did that get us? Aren't we right now dealing with the fallout from all of that? Were you better off because of the economic conditions that Alan Greenspan set up? Wouldn't you be disappointed to know 
that right now many people view Alan Greenspan with a lot of skepticism. Right? Isn't your economic future better off with a gold-backed currency than it is with these academics who don't even have unanimity unanimity among the people in their own departments at their alma maters at their universities right making decisions based on a money supply that they themselves decide on the quantity and the timing, right? Isn't that inconsistent with democracy? Moreover, you know how the political cycles are, right? These politicians want to get reelected. They want to bring pork home to their constituents. They want to make sure if there's a time horizon that their constituents are rewarded on their watch. Right? There's a built-in bias toward enrichment of the constituents at a time when the politician can benefit. Right? The politician's more interested in enriching constituents today than he would be, let's say, pursuing policies that would enrich the constituents after he's left office, right? Understand, those are the politicians voting on these PhDs who are vying with each other for the top spot at places like the Federal Reserve, right? Is that the kind of paradigm that you feel is preferable to a market-based gold-backed currency? So let me just tell you. So I'm at the courthouse in Orange County yesterday, first time in years, and I walk through the courtyard, right, from my garage. Now, it was so shocking to me to see a homeless person as I walked from the garage that I looked at the person and I thought, wow, this is surprising. A homeless person at the Orange County Superior Court. Now, as I said, it's been years. Maybe this has been going on for five, six years. I don't know. But understand, as I walked out of the garage and looked over at the side, you had dozens of homeless people, dozens, who were living in the courtyard walkway area of the Orange County Superior Court. It was jarring. So after my hearing, I uh, drove through Santa Ana. Right now, Santa Ana is you know, a neighborhood that used to be a robust neighborhood, right? It's, um, you know, we'll call it a working class, middle class area that was thriving in the early 90s. You saw the commerce. You saw a lot of entrepreneurs out, right? But as I drove through, Santa Ana wasn't what it used to be, right? Economically, it just wasn't as robust as it was in the early 90s, right? You know, you could just sense that a lot of dollars had been drained from Santa Ana. Now, let me just point out, as a person of color, I appreciated Santa Ana in the early 90s because Santa Ana was mainly populated back then by people of color, right? Not black, but Latino, right? Santa Ana is still Latino but you could tell that it had less money. So, of course, as I drove to drop off my rent-a-car, right, and the rent-a-car office was over in Newport Beach, 
you know the rest. As I'm driving through, you know, by John Wayne Airport and stuff, I'm seeing new buildings left and right. The wealthy part of town is as wealthy as ever. There's more wealth in Newport Beach than there was when I lived there a long time ago. Right? I was a renter. I don't want to, you know, say here that I was living large. But, you know, when I lived in Newport Beach, let's just say Newport Beach has gotten better. While inland Orange County has gotten worse, the wealth gap has widened as a result of our monetary policy being hijacked and taken over by these so-called experts. Right? So, view me among those who worries when I hear that some intellectual is going to solve our problems. Right? Understand, when we talk about a currency that's gold-backed, that's whose value is set by the market. What we're really saying is the value is being set by the people who use the currency. The millions of people who use the currency. Right? Now, why it's better for, let's say, a, an Alan Greenspan, a Ben Bernanke, or a Janet Yellen, to have control of the printing press to decide what the quantity of money is going to be and to decide to devalue the dollar and to give these nominal interest rates that don't make saving that worthwhile. Why that's preferable to a gold-backed market-based currency is beyond me. So to those of you who believe in the current paradigm, I hope you leave your comments here in the video sec in the comment section to this YouTube video. Right? Let's have a robust discussion on it. Right? I would argue that it's the dilution of the dollar right and the transfer of power from the gold standard to the current PhD standard that has hurt the poor that has hurt the middle class that has people over investing in real estate and the stock market to the detriment of the social fabric of the United States, right? How affordable are homes in your area? Is a home at this point even worthwhile given the mortgage payment and commitment you have to make to it, right? Wouldn't we all have far more wealth if there wasn't this malinvestment Right? Really caused by people realizing that they can't trust dollar denominated bank accounts. Right? Now there's even talk about bail ins. Banks actually charging you for your bank account. Do you think all of this would have been happening if we had a gold backed US dollar? Do you think the emergence of cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin would happen if we had a gold back dollar that was still the reserve currency globally. Isn't the problem here the fact that we know the dollar is just a fiat currency delinked from gold? Right? Let's just say I never saw so many homeless people at Orange County Superior Court before yesterday. Let's just say the numbers show us that with the current administration, and I'm not saying the GOP is any different, but with Democratic control for the last six years of the Oval Office, and with Democratic control, continuous control of the Senate, right, over the last six years, the data's in and the wealth gap has increased. 
right? I'm someone who would like to see the wealth gap narrowing, not increasing. Why would I support this political status quo? Right? Those are the questions to ponder. Right? How many communities like Santa Ana are there across the United States right now where middle class people and working class people are feeling increasingly squeezed? Right? Isn't your future better off in a market-based economy than it is in some centralized PhD standard economy? Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. As I like to say, nothing has created more wealth globally. Nothing has lifted more people out of poverty globally than free markets. Why are we trying to go in some false academic different direction? Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.